know everybody was looking forward to him being here, but um, instead, I'm going to bring out uh, a couple people. Um, Like, that's an actual story. I'm a terrible person. 
So now we all call him Nick. <laughs> Mike Sipes. Thank you. Well, I actually brought me to my first Comic Con when I was probably, what, like four? Yeah. Down yeah. Down Florida. About four years old, I would go to like OG Comic Cons. It was just comic books. There was like no other pop culture stuff. Um, but we drive around in the camper and I mess around with truck drivers uh, on the CB. Anybody know what a CB is? Yeah. 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 I would uh, get truck drivers chasing us down the highway because they knew that it was coming from our car. <laughs> um, and my dad goes, one day you're going to do cartoons. And I moved to California and my first audition, after working on it for a while, like, my agent let me get into the recording booth and just kind of read McDonald's auditions for a couple hours until I was happy to like, be like, here's my McDonald's audition. And I never... That took you hours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, John's like, even I can't sit with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get that. Uh, but my first real audition where they sent me out of the office and they're like, uh, okay, you're ready to go out and audition was for Beast Boy. And uh, I, I looked at a picture of Beast Boy and his character description and out came his voice and never ever does it before. And here I am now, 20 years later, still playing Beast Boy with the Mama Tara. <laughs> And I'm the happiest dude in the world because I get to bring my wingman G with me everywhere. He's in every recording session. He's the real life beast boy and he's very happy to be here. Look at that. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Do you want to tell us about your, your peace, love, animals? No? Yeah, well, it's all about the peace. It's all about the love. It's all about the animals. It's all about wingman G. And we live in Venice Beach where there's a lot of homeless people and a lot of homeless dogs. And basically, we created a book series where we teach meditation, yoga, and uh, how to let animals lead the way. And the proceeds go to feeding the dogs and homeless people, mostly the dogs of Venice Beach. And um, that's what the Peace Love Animals Foundation is all about. Which is amazing. And they can find that on your website? Yeah, yeah, you can find it on the website or come down to, to, to our booth. And I've got books and stuff, and you can see how to read them. And I have the homeless dogs in Venice Beach. And actually, the bigger picture is we're actually going to have a, a sanctuary in Hawaii and other states as well, where basically we're going to foster our dogs. People can come learn how to take care of the dog and the dog at the Wing Man G Sanctuary. It's going to be cool. That's amazing. Yeah, Wing Man G! We love you! That's me. So. You also, you were a surfer. I am a surfer. Or you are a surfer, but you were like ranked a ranked surfer. I was third in the U.S., junior pro surfer. And actually, that's one of the only times that me and women are not together is when we're surfing or when I'm in a sauna. Otherwise, we're together 100% of the time. Hmm. I'm the luckiest spot that I know of. <laughs> Enough with your dog, but no. I'm the highest form of life on the planet. All animals are, but I find that dogs are the easiest to understand you know, the, the most the subtle communications of basically hanging out with the guru. You know, all the greatest qualities in the universe are within him. Uh, compassion, patience, playfulness, loyalty. <laughs> I like he uses loyalty and he was <laughs> 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 But I love you, Wendy! Loyalty! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm happy. You guys can do whatever. Um, we will be taking questions. There's a microphone um, in front of the camera. It's that one. Um, so you can line, start lining up because I have a feeling there's going to be quite a few. No Kari questions, okay? <laughs> so. Um, so I'm going to So how familiar, while everybody's lining up, were you, were you with the properties before you started doing the, the shows? I'm not going to mention that. Have you read some Titans comics before? I had a whole bunch of comics growing up. Um, I wasn't necessarily like completely into Teen Titans comics, but uh, I had like a, a whole bunch of comics that I, I enjoyed, and <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I, learned, I, had more, I grew up with more Marvel stuff, really, a lot of Marvel comics. Like what? Like, uh, <laughs> like Captain America. <laughs> no, I'm serious, I remember the cover. <laughs> Good. Get back with me. He just shares the love. 
All right, uh, please tell us your name so we know who we're talking to, and there you go. Hi there. Uh, my name is Christian. Hi, Christian. Yeah. Well, um, first off, I'd like to want to shout out the fact that, uh, paraphrasing the famous Canadian, Eric Strong, you are the best there is at what you do. Thank you! Very kind of you. Secondly, just to acknowledge that this is the 20th anniversary of the Baltimore Comic Con, and uh, I feel we're doing it right by having Tara Strong and Greg Sykes in the room. Can we have a hand, everybody? Baltimore Comic Con is the best. 20 years of this? 20 years. Wow. That's so cool. And from the great state of where Elijah Cummings came from, we want to give thanks to Elijah and the works and services of the American people and the world. And the world. Okay, question. Um, so I wonder if you guys could speak to uh, the evolution of character, because both of you, you played you know, many different versions of the same character. You know, like there's a few versions of Beast Boy, you know, there's Titans, Titans Go, there's uh, Young Justice, Darren, you know, even say it, I mean, there's Harley, there's, you know, there's Batgirl, there's, there's a whole slew. I mean, uh, but also like something like Ashi, where you, know, you have to get growth of character. That character started off with something very different than what she ended up being uh, by the end of things. Like, like the evolution character, what goes into that? What do you guys think? Every time you go to a role, like, has it change? Well, you know, uh, we have incredible writers um, in animation, and you guys know because you're fans, but I think by and large in the world, you don't really appreciate how brilliant the animation writers are. Um, and particularly ones that come from comics that loved it and knew it and understand these characters and then create these arcs for us to portray. And often people say, oh, what's it like to be in a studio? Are you just reading? No, we all have acting background. We know how to break down a scene. We know how to do character development. We actually picture all the moments in our heads that we're reading so that it translates to you guys and you feel like you're with us. So first of all, thank you for recognizing those arcs and those journeys and we go with them. Um, this is not a spoiler because we all know this, but in the, in the game where the Joker dies, as Harley, I cried. I cried in the studio because I was feeling those emotions. So when we read the scripts and we read where those characters go, we go with them. And I find, I don't know if you find this, but it is often mirroring my life. Do you have this? When there's like a, an yeah. arc and a growth? When Tara was breaking my heart in the original shell, <laughs> this other girl breaking my heart into That's a lie. That's a lie. No, it's not. It's very real. That's why the emotions came through. People are like, I really felt that. It's because I was feeling it. Now with Teen Titans Go, it's like when I'm really hungry for some vegan waffles, it shows up in the show! You go deep on that one. That's some deep emotion. I mean, who doesn't want a vegan waffle? Anyway, it's due to the great writing, great actors that we get to work alongside, great voice directors, and it's a very collaborative process. And of course, the animators and the artists and the music, and it all comes together to sort of give the audience these moments that are very meaningful where characters get to grow. We're just lucky that we get to play that. Speaking of music, Tara actually has a beautiful choreographed dance. She wants to perform for everybody. Thank you. I know you're doing it together. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be behind you. No, I think everybody needs to get I'm trying to find a song. Which one is it? <laughs> did that answer your question, sweet boy? Yes, it did. And thanks for dropping by our neck in the woods, guys. Yeah, me and the world. Thanks. Thank you. I just have to say, from this angle, it looks like he's floating. <laughs> you are floating. Look out for the cider, man. She's taking all booty. Yeah, I'm talking to you. She's awesome. Uh, that's a different superhero universe. Y'all know this song? Yep. All right, all right, send them on. Who wants to go dance up with me? I don't know who we are. Pause it. Get your dance crew up here, please. Okay, everyone that wants to come dance with me, let's go. Get your dance crew. I'm going to watch. Oh, this is You too. Carly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tara worked on this choreograph dance for like four hours last night. She tried to get me to do it. I'm not a good choreographer or an Oxford dancer. Actually, Greg is a worst dancer, which is weird for someone who's three years old. That's not true. I'm a freestyle dancer. You're a terrible dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Look at this crew. Get up. It's a good crew. everybody that was tied to that show. I mean, you know, it, it, it was great. And Greg, I, I, uh, I follow you on Twitter, and uh, you're very um, wholesome, and you're like, you're very uh, in tune with the universe. Um, well, namaste. <laughs> um, I actually uh, sent you a post about uh, pantheism on Twitter. Uh, I don't know if you know me, because you remember it, because there's like thousands of people on Twitter, so. But, um, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that I got to talk to you, because, um, you know, I just love how wholesome you guys are. Um, and now for my question. Uh, so I do watch Teen Titans Go. I love uh, some of the topical humor. The Super Bowl episode was like one of my favorite episodes when they're talking about like how they subsidize all of the economy instead of paying for the infrastructure. That was like one of my favorite jokes in the whole show. That's one of my favorite things about our show is that we do very, very in-depth storylines where we teach generations to come about very important issues like Low income housing. What to do if you have to pee in an elevator? <laughs> Pyramid schemes. And I, I actually did research into the show because I was like, oh yeah, they're probably just talking about, you know, random stuff and all that. But I had to actually do the research and I was like, wow, they're actually talking about stuff that like makes sense. Like you go on Wikipedia or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we're very, we're, yeah. Educa we're more like an educational show than anything else. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We talk, we talk about the gold standard. I punched President Nixon in the face. 
That was a good show. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my question was, with Teen Titans Go, do you have any more other topical episodes that you guys have been talking about? We just did one. We just did one. An educational type episode. Every episode's education. Anyway, we're not allowed to tell you, but yes, there are more like that. All right, cool. And there are more cool. stupid ones like Elevator Baby. Right, and the gold standard episode. That was just, oh my God, amazing. Thanks, bro. <laughs> anyway, thank you, and uh, y'all have a great one. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Mark. Uh, first, I want to thank Tara for her social media game. It is very strong and thank brave. You. I enjoy the songs that you've been singing lately. Um, so my question is, both of you have gotten to play uh, Tara, of course, a lot more roles, but if you yeah, guys could play a lot, a lot more. more, but you know, it's all, you know, it's perspective, you know, the universe gives certain here, certain there, but if you guys could play anybody in any genre, in anything that you haven't already, um, who would you play as far as voices go? Thank you very much. <laughs> what do you think, Tara? First of all, I think it'd be super fun if we got to play ourselves on camera. I think we'd kick all butt. Actually, we're doing that right now. You all are on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it would be fun if I got to do a version of Harley. Like, maybe with Harley's mom. <laughs> a little baby. That might be fun. Um, voiceover wise, I've never done The Simpsons. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done The Simpsons? No, I haven't. Yeah. I think it'd be cool if we were Mickey and Minnie, though. DCU, if he does, and he asks you, would you be interested in making a cameo? Um, yes, I'd love to do cameos. I suggested a long time ago, tell me if you guys think this is a good idea by show of hands, ready? In any of those movies, to have me, Hamill, and Conroy sitting in a diner. <laughs> right? I love the idea of cameo. I love how Stan Lee, God rest his soul, would put himself in movies. He even put himself in our movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love that. I love that. I think it's so fun. Yes, I'd love to do that. Hey Robin, have you seen your new movie that just came out, Teen Titans Go vs. Teen Titans yet? Unfortunately, no, but I've got to check it out as soon as I can. Anyone seen that here? Yeah, it's good. Not, wasn't it so nice to see OG again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good movie. Alright, that's pretty Well, I guess that's... Go sit down, fool! Alright! Yeah. <laughs> my time is done. <laughs> Thank you, great question. Hello, my name is Patrick, and first of, all, well, first of all, I'd like to say that and, uh, I couldn't grow up, uh, grow pull my hair out like Brett Egg did, even if I tried, and I've tried. You know how you grow hair really long? How? Green juice. Mm. No, I'm serious, because green juice builds your blood, and your blood is basically what, uh, when, you're, when your blood cells die, it creates your hair. So the more blood you're creating, the longer your hair is going to grow. So green juice creates new blood. Green juice without sweet, no apple. You want kale, lemon, ginger? I like the apple. I can't do my greens without well. Yes, you can. Yeah. But if you want long hair, green juice. Cool. Also, oh, do you have any advice for our future voice actors? Thank you. Don't copy anything Greg does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Website. I think it's a, so you want to be a voice actor, I want to be a voice actor, so if you Google D-E-E, -E, second word, Baker, and a lot of our comrades have some great books out there. Yeah, the Lord's not on our own book right now, it's called The Greg and Tara Show. Okay. <laughs> That's not the Just name of the book. Just take lots of acting classes and improv classes and don't ever pay to audition. I really 
despise these companies that are charging hopeful actors to audition right now. I know a lot of people do it and they, they believe in it, but there is not one person in our world, not one, who got there by paying to audition. It's a total scam. It makes me really angry, so don't do that. Are you, I want, you're wanting to be a voice actor? Yep, he just said that! Get up here. Come on, we're going to be a little bit proud of you. Bring your mic. Bring your mic. Okay, sit next to Tara Strong. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play the voice director. You're being put on the cast of Tara Strong. This is this is called a chemistry session. Okay. When they have two people, two actors, that they want to see how their chemistry is. Alright, you are, I'm gonna give you a scenario. You, you have you improv before? Yeah. Okay, Tara, times. have you improv before? Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are two con announcers. You're looking over a con. <laughs> And you're announcing the cool things that are happening at Baltimore Comic Con. And go, go create a character. What the hell, we have, have Michael Myers downstairs if you want to go get an autograph. Half, you can get it on a knife for $50. <laughs> Is that true? Is he signing knives? Yep. We have that just crazy. <laughs> it is. It's pretty crazy. I don't think I want a signed knife. How are you going to cut your teeth? <laughs> it's a fake knife and... Oh. I also saw uh, there, there were a lot of Predator fans that wanted to take my picture because wow, this is uh, a pretty fantastic costume. Where did you, you get uh, uh, I made it all by myself. Wow! Did you see that amazing uh, voice actor? He's a great sex down there. He's amazing, and you should uh, you have seen him. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about Greg. What do you think about his projects? I really love what you guys go. Um, you have to be careful with your hands. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and we got the room! Good job. You did great. You did really good. No, no, don't, don't drop the mic. Give it to her. No mic dropping. But you did drop the mic. Good job. That's, that's what it takes. You just gotta do it. People always, always ask, like, how do I get into voice acting? You actually just have to do it. You gotta, you know, do pod make your own things, like do podcasts, read books out loud, just play, 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 find artists to work with, find writers to work with, and just make stuff, and do it, and have fun, right Tara? Yep. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shirley, and what's your favorite song to sing with Kari Payton? <laughs> <laughs> waffles, waffles, waffles. Waffles, 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 Thanks. <laughs> what? How's it on the dreams? Well, it's fine. I just sent that kid to a portal. She'll be back later. Oh, well, I'll have to retrieve her later then. I'm Joey. I'm Charlotte's dad. Um, my question is for you, Tara, because I've grown up in boys because I have sons that rank, you know, 13, 16 year olds who've been 10, you know, listening to all those shows and and hearing you, you know, with some of the new Lego characters and, and so forth, but my, my question is, when you're in the booth with Kari, is, does he suck the air out of the room? I mean, does he, I mean, Cyborg is awesome, and you get an awesome chance to work with him, so how does, how does that work out? <laughs> he rubs off on me, you know? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know any of that stuff, okay? So. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I'm so good, is because Kari's always recording next to me. Yeah, Kari's not here right now, so... Well, we were kind of disappointed about that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, I mean, honestly... Good question, listen up. As a dad, we do, we, we appreciate the, the views because, uh, you know, my dad six-year-old is, is learning about parents' games, so thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I wish Kari was here. <laughs> My name is Willard. Holy crap, you have a great voice! <laughs> we should hire this guy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's, 
speaking like one of the things I love animation, but sometimes there's some one of the things about voice actors, sometimes when you're doing a scene, I guess it's just you. And I'm just wondering sometimes how do you do a scene where you're literally almost talking to yourself alone to do a scene? Or I guess some, sometimes Greg's person I wish he's with you that you have to figure out, okay, I'm talking to Raven now, but not <laughs> Tara. And there's like how you work about that where it's one person, but various other characters in that one body. How does that work? That's a great question. So there, that's two parts, right? One is that when we do animation, we typically work together, which we prefer, because we can play off each other. We have so much fun. We really love each other, and there's an energy in the room. So when he's not there, because we work together so much, and for some reason he can't be there, I, I pretty much know how he's going to say a line, and then I can react to it. But it's always better when the other actor's in the room. If, if the actor goes, let's get out of here, you might go, OK. And you wouldn't have said it that way had they not been there. So it's always better. Video games and movies, you work alone, so that's more challenging. But it's because there's a billion lines. And you know, a video game can have, I'm doing one right now, there's 900 lines. So to have another actor sitting in there and waiting for everybody to be happy, there's lots of cooks in those kitchens. When you're working in animation or any other kind of voiceover, there's directors and writers and creators and producers and all kinds of people that want to be heard, so it's important. And when you're playing off yourself, it's extra fun. Uh, some actors prefer to go back to back. Some directors prefer to go back to back. It depends on how they're recording the show. Uh, and when sometimes, back back, like sometimes if I'm if I'm doing background right now, and then all of a sudden Holly comes into play, and then I have to go back girl, and then Holly has something to say, but then I have to be back girl, and then Holly, and then back girl, and Holly, I can do the back to back. But um, but sometimes the director will prefer to have them on separate tracks. So they'll go through the script and say, let's do all of that girl's lines, let's do all of Harley lines. With that said, sometimes we do them back to back. So it's actors and director's choice, and sometimes it depends on the scene. So let's say it's a very heavy Batgirl episode and there's only one or two lines as Harley, maybe I'll do it back to back. And I remember when I first moved to town and I booked the Rugrats, I was watching Kath Susie do Phil and Lil back to back, that was a trip. Like just as a baby screaming at herself, you know, the whole time with Larry's voice. It's a gift and it's a skill set that, that um, you have and that you can harness and work on. But it's super fun to watch. I encourage you guys to look behind the scenes and see some of the actors on the internet's so great. I mean, our predecessors had no idea how beloved they were. And thank you guys for coming out and showing us how much you love us. It means everything to us, really. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Andres. I have a question for Terry. In um, the uh, HD um, remake of Final Fantasy X, it had an auto track at the end that might have a possibility to have a part three or not, or anything. But if it does, would you play your role as Riku? I, I will say that I love Riku, and if, if they ask me to do it again, I'll be there, but I haven't heard anything yet. But I'd be there. I love Riku. Okay. And for Greg, if they did. Final Fantasy X, will you join her and play a new character on No. And <laughs> uh, they'd have to pay me a lot of money to continue to work with her. It's like, only oh, because I'm under contract to like, continue with Teen Titans Go. I'm like, boom! Alright, see? See? This is what I have to do with. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nell. Uh, my question is for you, Tara. Um, will there be a season three of Unikitty or any more episodes? And speaking of Unikitty, are you actually best friends with Greg Griffin, or is that just something the internet really wants to be true? You know, there's so many funny internet stories, like me and Cree make out, which is true. I've seen them. Yeah. Um, I love Greg. We all love each other so much. You'd be real hard pressed to find a voice actor that's not awesome. Because as opposed to on camera, it doesn't matter what you look like, you just get work based on this gift that you have. And there's such a mutual respect. Every single day that I'm in the studio, I'm blown away by something that one of our compadres do. It's really, really amazing. Um, and Unikitty, which I love to do, which I think is a show that's just taking off, uh, and we have so much fun, did not get a pickup. So if y'all want to tweet at it and let the network know how much you love it. That's often how shows get a pickup. Happened with Family Guy. It happens. That's 
So let them know. I don't know why. Some, it's like a new trend right now where they just do a show for a little bit. Same with Rocky and Bullwinkle. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's hard to catch on Amazon. If you haven't, I really recommend you do. Second season with Weird Al and Mario Lopez. It's so funny. It's so well done. And I feel like often networks will cancel shows right as they're getting going. And if you guys, you guys know this. If you watch the first season of any show and compare it to the fifth, sixth, seventh, Seinfeld, you know, Simpsons, it takes a while for things to get going. So I love you, Kitty, and I wish I could say different, but if everybody lets them know, maybe we'll get more. So it's them, it's not you being like, we're done. Oh, no, so you will never, just so y'all know, voice actors will never go, nah, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> if we're replaced on something, it's not because we asked for too much money, it's not because we don't want to do it. Inevitably, there's a network decision, which we can't argue with, we have no say in, but just so you know, we love voicing the characters as much as you love watching them. It actually happened with Teen Titans. You know, our show came back because Cartoon Network received more actual handwritten fan mail for any other show in, in its uh, existence. And that made a big difference to bring Teen Titans back, Teen Titans Go, it's because the fans made it happen. Thank you. Good afternoon, guys. How's it going? Good. What is your favorite Raven and Beast Boy moment of our time in Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go? I feel like. My favorite moment is actually the song BB Ray, where um, I wrote the song. Sing it! It's all about my baby, yes, all about Ray. And if I don't got my baby, all I do is get paid, get paid. Summertime, toes in the sand. Carnival ride, baby, hand in hand. Sharing through the inner pieces, too. Yum, yum, yummy, baby, I love you. Oh no, she went to the loo. What was that? She was a piece of two. I don't know the rest of the lyrics, so maybe you do. <laughs> But yeah, I love that episode about, about you know, the BB Ray episode because it was a two-parter and I got to write the song with my friend DJ Hammer and produce it and they took the song and made this really twisted storyline for me and Tara and you know, Raven gets really mad that I, I wrote the song for her and I start performing it like, you know, I get really famous like Justin Bieber <laughs> and she, she, she takes my voice out and basically has, has, has me sing the wrong lyrics and destroys my career and I realize, you know, it's all about my Ray Ray and it's not about other people. Should be a good story. It should be a good story for Springer, though. Just saying. Huh? It should be a good story for Jerry Springer or something. Jerry Springer? Can you repeat the question? Well, it said it should be good for a Jerry Springer episode or something. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like Raven and Tara duking it out for Beast Boy. Yeah. I take that. Yeah, I bet you do. Whatever. Thank you. Hello, my name's Kelly. My question is, do you have a favorite story arc for your character from the original Teen Titans? Uh, favorite storyline? <laughs> I don't want my answer. <laughs> um, I, you know what, I love I loved doing that show so much. We had so many great guest stars on that show, too. I love the colors of Raven. I love um, anything with Trigon. Like the real serious stuff with her dad and Slade, that was so cool. And I love the movie in Tokyo, it was awesome. It's just awesome. Do you have a favorite? Actually, one of my favorite, favorite Raymond moments was when she turned into a rabbit. When she turned into a rabbit? Yeah, that was pretty funny. There's some great memes of that online. And for B Boy, when he had to um, take the lead when uh, Brotherhood of Evil tried to take over. My, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> Not as good as the one I was about to say, but <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, no, 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 no. I like the episode where Beast Boy um, wants a moped really bad, and he almost sells his soul in the whole universe to get a moped. <laughs> you know, because the, the big tofu alien monster Tofu comes down and tries to take over the world. But I, you know, I, I have a better judgment. And Are you okay right now? Yeah, I still want that moped. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I'm a big fan of Bo Cartoon. Thank you both for coming. Thank you. Hi, I'm Justin, and my question is, um, what's your favorite version of Beast Boy or Raven to play? Ooh, good question. I love them all, but I feel like the funnier, the more fun we get to have. The funnier the, the version. I, I really split down the middle. I, I know I, I love the original one, and I'd love to do more. We want to do more. We want to do season six, but we also have so much fun doing Go, and 
when we got to do this latest movie with the Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go, we got to play it in so many different universes, and we loved every single one. It was so much fun. And we're so grateful that they keep us um, to do their voices, because, you know, sometimes they do dumb things in this business <laughs> and make bad decisions. So when they keep us <laughs> together, we really, we love, we would do any, like I, I've said before, we would do Titans on Ice. I mean, you have to learn how to skate. I'm actually a pretty good ice skater. I don't know about that. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carter, and do you like doing the Beast Boy voice, and does it hurt you when you do it? I love it. I like doing it a lot. And what was the second question? Does uh, it hurt? Yeah. No, bro. <laughs> 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 all my voice. Uh, actually, it made my voice very strong. Um, so it doesn't hurt, not at all. I can actually do Beast Boy's voice if I lose my voice. Like there's still like a Beast Boy voice in there even if I lose my voice. So, no, it doesn't hurt. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Let's hear your best Beast Boy voice. Get back on my mic. Yeah. Check, check, check. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hi, my name is Emily. Um, okay, first of all. Um, I love your work. I grew up with it since I was like small child. <laughs> About like this okay. No, bitch. <laughs> um, so out of all the voices you've done, um, what was your favorite? Because I want to be a voice actress when I grow up. Tara, you out of your one million voices. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I, I, I'm so lucky, like. I love doing Powerpuff Girls, Rugrats, Teen Titans, Here They Out Parents, so much fun. And I love doing Harley as a girl. But my very favorite um, role that I ever booked was Melody in The Little Mermaid 2, because I totally fangirled when I met Joni Benson. Like, I burst into tears, and to sing with her in the studio was a dream come true. I could have died the next day, like that was that kind of day. I remember Melody from that. You do? Yeah, I do. That was my favorite job yeah. ever. I mean, who doesn't want to be a mermaid, right? Yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. I'm out of your two, out of your two characters that you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to be a voice actress just like you, Tara. Well, I hope I see you in the booth. Yeah, I want to be a voice actress just like you too, Tara. <laughs> good, like, good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I play a lot of girls on a whole bunch of cartoons. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of girl screams. Oh yeah? You have a career on that? I mean, I, I've got Okay, okay. <laughs> What's your favorite voice you out of the two that you're known for? <laughs> um, <laughs> I love them all. They're all different <laughs> From Kevin Levin to Michelangelo. Anybody like the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> I'm just Mikey. And you're not. <laughs> Uh, I love them all, really. You know, the greener the better. I love playing Iron Fist. I love, I love being the first actor to bring these iconic comic book characters to life for the first time because when I get to voice them forever, it changes who they are. They all, all of a sudden are Iron Fist Sipes, or Michelangelo Sipes, or Beast Boy Sipes, forever. And I think that's a really special opportunity to create. <laughs> Thanks, Mama Terry. I love them all. All right, one question. No, no. Are you ready? All right. All right, bye. Come to our table after. We'll be signing autographs after. You can come ask a question. I don't charge if you ask a question. He charges when you ask a question. No, no, questions are $1.25. $1.25 a question. Hi, my name is Maya, and um, Raven's my favorite character when Teen Titans go. Like, Thank you. Ever. She's, she's amazing. It bodies me. But, like, What's your favorite scene that you guys did together in Teen Titans? Ooh, favorite scene. You know what's actually really fun? Did you guys see the 200th episode? Yeah. When they, they animated us, which is the first time that's ever happened. Yeah. And we got to like be ourselves in the booth, we were doing selfies. That was so much fun to record. I love the 200th episode. Yeah, that was really fun. It was also nominated for an Emmy. Yeah, that was really fun. Hey, my name is Dave Montana. What's your favorite character on Mortal Kombat 10? Huh? <laughs> uh, 
I was like, He's like, was I in that? What's your favorite video game? Oh. On, on Mortal Kombat. Work with Mortal Kombat. I mean, Damn. I grew up playing Mortal Kombat. I love Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I care, uh, Scorpion was my favorite character. Okay. What's yours favorite? Sub-Sil. Right on, right on. What was one of the girl characters? What's their names? Um, I, I say... Uh, you never even played the game! Go sit down! I say, um, Katanga. Alright. Good question. I'll play you later. Let's find the, the console to play on. Okay. Alright. I know your word. Thank you. you. Thank you. Play more than that? No. <laughs> Hi. My name is Tim. What up, Tim? <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, my question is for Greg. Um, how do you feel about the ending of the show, the first Teen Titans? Because it kind of ended on a cliffhanger. Like, it was supposed to end in the fourth season, and they literally had this whole thing planned out. And then, like you said, Part 2 Network brought it back for another season. And then they kind of left it on this plot line where Terry got amnesia and Beast Boy keeps trying to bring her back. And we don't talk about Tara or Raven, okay, bro? Okay. Not a good move. Not okay. a good move. But how how do you feel about the show just having its club pulled and then having and then having a sixth season tease and then that ended up becoming Teen Titans Go? I think it's awesome because the show is so multi-dimensional that all these different kind of wild storylines can be happening at the same time, whether it's the more serious things where Beast Boy does his heart broken by Tara. Or, you know, he's writing B.B. Ray songs and all these different things can be, can be happening at once. And there actually is going to be a sixth season at some point soon. It's been so close. And you're going to see what's going to happen with, uh, with that. But you got to be patient, bro. Okay, All right. Good question. We have about five minutes, so ask questions quickly so we can get through as many people as we can. Hi, my name is Jason. Um, my question was, if you could play anyone in the Marvel Universe, who would it be? Ooh. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, super Mickey! <laughs> you know, I, I already got to play my dream Marvel character, um, MJ. But, uh, it's so cool. Michael Jackson? <laughs> you played Michael Jackson? What? <laughs> and I got to be Scarlet Witch and Squirrel Girl. I've had some fun in the Marvel Universe. Michael Jackson now? He doesn't even know he's in the Marvel Universe. I am the Marvel Universe. Okay. Iron Fist, baby. If you could yeah. play anyone in the Marvel Universe, who would it be? Iron Fist. Not I'm you. Probably Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider-Man! Yeah, that'd be cool. Thank you. Good question. Um, hi, my name's Amber. And my question is, which character has given you the most emotion during recording? Do you have <laughs> 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 um, You know, like I said, I cried as Harley when, when the Joker died. Do you have any emotional moments like that? No. No. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been pretty affected by sad moments when I them for sure. No, you're right. There has been there's been some emotional moments when like Splinter died on our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle show. That was I, I shed a tear in that moment. It's it's deep. It's a deep moment when you when you dad moves on. You're the dad that's okay. okay. Right. All right, never mind. Don't ask him anymore. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you. What do you mean? That was a very like deep moment. It was no. very somber. What's your question? Just your Jason Biggs was really <laughs> sad too. Hello, my name is Troy, and in a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you want your dog to play in Tea Times Go? <laughs> Actually, he already is on the show. When Beast Boy turns into a dog, sometimes he turns into Beast Boy. And on Instagram right now, if you pull up the Beast Boy GIF, there's like a selected Beast Boy GIF. GIF? GIF? Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that! You know, a lot of people know, a lot of people don't know. The only reason I know is because I won a shorty award. It's called the GIF? GIF. Oh. So yeah, the Beast no. Boy's Jif? Yes. I know, it's weird. It's true. You say Jif, I say Jaff. Okay. <laughs> I 
turn, he turns into a wingman. So get it. It's cool. Like, selfie of yourself right now and put a uh, beast Plus, wingman right. really is in every episode because he brings him to every single recording session. <laughs> every single one, wingman is there, for reals. But I do keep pushing for them to give Beast Boy a dog. I do. Like, please just let Beast Boy have a dog at the tower and let it be a wingman G. It'd be funny if, like, the dog loved everyone but Beast Boy. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah, and um, I have two questions, one for Tara and one for Greg. For Tara, um, who inspired you the most to uh, voice act? And for Greg, uh, what does Beast Boy, uh, what is this Beast Boy's uh, favorite uh, trait of Raven? My favorite phrase? No, your favorite trait, as in like... A trait? Yeah. I love your legs, yo! <laughs> <laughs> Lady Levises! Ladies, when you start dating, watch for that. <laughs> What's your favorite trait? Your legs? Um, my inspirations growing up, you know, um, when I was a little girl, I loved watching cartoons. I loved the Flintstones and the Jetsons and the Smurfs. Um, and for rock stars that came before me, of course, June Foray. She's brilliant. Um, but all kinds of actresses and actors inspired me, and just even voices listening around me and taking stuff in. Like, right before Rugrats, I was on a plane with a screaming baby, and I'm like, that's going to come in handy <laughs> soon. Um, and my mama and my dad, they, they uh, encouraged me every single day. There were no actors in my family, and they really supported me. So moms and dads out there, if your kid has that burning desire, just let, let them at least try. It's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is going to be our last question, but if you don't get to ask your question, they'll be on the, the floor at their yeah, yeah, celebrity area. Yeah, so come you down. get your question, come to our booth. Tara will answer all your questions. Greg, dollar fifteen. you can talk to Greg. Hi. Hi. Hey, talk to Greg. <laughs> Hi, I'm Connor. What was it like to play Dylan Rugrats? Oh, so much fun. You know, I first um, started on the Rugrats as a different character. There was an episode where um, Angelica was at the park with her babies, and there was a kid named Timmy McNulty at the park with his babies, and he was mean to his babies, and she was mean to her babies, so they kind of fell in love. And I had so much fun doing that. So that's how they got to know me. I played Timmy, and I played one of the other little kids. And originally they brought me in to guide track the baby because they were offering it to a big celebrity. I had heard at the time it was in Dahana. And um, often we'll do guide tracking for um, the movie and then they'll, they'll, they want to bring in a celebrity. And we do those things because sometimes we get to keep them, which happened in Rugrats. And I had to scream. Do you guys want to hear the baby don't cry? Yes. Okay, it's going to be loud. They don't like me. No, a new mom in the studio started lactating. And then I knew I had the part. And every day that I did that show, I was blessed. It was so much fun. There's a new season coming out. Um, unfortunately, Baby Dill is not in the first season, which I think is, of course, another big network mistake, but we'll, we'll get a message. But that was a gift, that show. I love that show. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Yeah, thank you for spending time with us. Yeah. Oh yeah, what's, what's up, little Mama Ray Ray? My dreams come true in Springtown. Oh, wow! Look at that! Certificate of Excellence. The best singer somewhere to present at the Beast Boy. Tara Strong means nothing to me. <laughs> She's not a good voice actor. The best actor of all time. <laughs> That's so cool. Thanks, Mom, for my head. I'm so bad. Oh, Greg and Lumen, thank you for being funny. Every con, her and her mama make all these amazing costumes, and Dad helps too. Her dad, her, dad told, her dad told me yesterday that she was super shy until the DC Superhero Girls came out, and she started dressing up, and she always shows up and gives us love. Let's give her a hand. What do you got? Kyle, we love you. Can you read this letter? 
Dear Tara Strong, you're just okay. Greg is amazing. Tara Strong, you should learn more from Greg. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Go see you.